Let's learn a little bit about this BC Numeracy Assessment. Let's Google it and click on the first link. Students write this assessment in the grade 10 year and is required for graduation. There's 24 questions centered on four situations. and It's all going to be written online on the computer. There's two written response questions that are to be written on paper. And here's the rubric. Four is the highest score and zero is the lowest. Let's try to understand how to get a good grade. Four, student demonstrates an extensive understanding of the situation. The approach is effective and comprehensive. The solution is supported by relevant evidence and any errors are minor and do not hinder the solution's reasonableness within the context. The reasoning is clearly communicated and addresses all critical and pertinent aspects of the problem. So it's very important to show your work, to think critically, and to demonstrate your sophistication. If you click on this workbook, Sample Situations and Questions, giving out bonuses, we get this nice sales team members case study. There's an answer key here, and there's even a sample response for that open-ended question, question five, which we'll talk about in a bit. There's a series of videos which relates to this case study, and five numeracy processes are emphasized in this numeracy assessment. It's interpreting, applying, solving, analyzing, and communication. So to do well in this numeracy assessment, you have to be able to interpret tables and graphs, refer to information, and uh, look back and forth and find and understand the context of a problem. We need to be able to apply and solve real-world problems in the context of math. We need to be able to solve math problems, calculating things properly. And we also need to analyze math problems to see if things make sense in a situation. And a key here is to communicate your work. Even very, very bright students may not receive full credit because they're not showing their work. They're not communicating fully. You need to state your assumptions and based off the situation in the case study, show the examiner what you're trying to do. Show detailed solutions, draw some diagrams, draw some graphs. Here we can download some sample exams. Video solutions have been made to these at hunkim.com slash numeracy. Here's your sample A PDF. You can see that this would take a lot of sheets of papers to print out, but there's your water case study. You can download the answer keys as well over here. There's your sample B numeracy assessment. And here are some reference pages. The reference pages has nice formulas which may come in handy. We see the Pythagorean theorem, some uh, geometric formulas. We even have some information about the slope and the uh, equation of a line and that speed equals distance over time. Here we see a marking guide and student exemplars. For these different case studies, we can try to aim for a four. We already talked about demonstrating that our strategy is clearly communicated. It has to be comprehensive. Show your work. Everything should make sense. We need to demonstrate sophistication in what we're doing. The math solution should be correct with no errors. We need to be aware and even state clearly some limitations of our solutions. We need to use proper math symbols and languages and graphs. And here we start to see some solutions to the open-ended problems for the water use and there's many other case studies as well. So we'll be discussing that in the videos at hunkim.com slash numeracy. 
And here's an example of what's the score of a 4, verse 3, verse 2, verse 1. Just thinking about the overview of this numeracy assessment, make sure you find out from your school when your exam actually is. And we even know about, be aware of a, the calculator policy. A scientific calculator is built into the online assessment. However, students may also use their own calculator. I strongly advise this, as your calculator will be a lot faster and less clunky. Let's get some advice from comments from markers. Let's read one weakness here that students made. Many estimated answers for an item or population is to several decimal places, not realizing solutions should be integers. As for planning and designing, here's another weakness. Some students confuse the volume and the surface area formulas. Please make sure you're crystal clear. Do not mix up area equals pi r squared versus circumference equals pi d. And again, always show your logic. Show your work. Only about 5% of BC students got a 4 one particular year. What we have here is the concept of sh fairly sharing things. And make sure you're not just using your own opinion in justifying a fair share question. You need to actually show your math and numeracy skills. And as for modeling, know this word, extrapolation. Even though the data is outside of the actual graph, we can actually use math to predict the future, predict things that are beyond what the, the information that we actually have. Some had difficulties plotting irregular intervals of measurements. Be super careful what your actual units are on a graph. Is it counting by ones? Are you counting by twos? Are you counting by fives or tens? You might accidentally be thrown off. Read those units carefully. Here's a nice general hint. Students communicated most effectively when explaining their logic in point form rather than paragraphs. So you might want to consider trying to make your answer in point form and make it as neat as possible. Here's some other good advice. Students should be encouraged to write common question calculations on scrap paper rather than response sheets that are scanned. So if you're allowed to use scrap paper, which you are, use that and make your answers nice and neat. And finally, this last point is interesting. Students who perform poorly mistook information from the common question section of the assessment as relevant to the constructed response questions. So there might be some similarity in the case study, but make sure you're actually reading the constructed response questions uh, itself as its own question, as opposed to mixing facts from the, the previous similar questions. Finally, let's click on the parent brochure. So here's some in interesting information. Students can retake the numeracy assessment to improve their proficiency score. and their best level achieved will be counted as, as their final result. So aim high and keep trying. You can check your performance here. The link actually works. And it looks like in the exam, you have two hours to complete it. However, you're given an extra hour. So a total of three hours to write the exam. And here's an important question. Will results be considered by post-secondary institutions? We're not sure because each university, it's up to them. I think it's a good idea to prepare through the available numeracy assessment, the past exams, the sample exams. However, it's nice that we don't have to overstress about it like many other provinces and places in the world where it's a high stakes testing, where the final exam is the end all. British Columbia used to have a provincial exam, but now it's changed considerably. Who knows what the future holds? Good luck on the numeracy assessment!